My name is Lizzie. Each week I'm bringing along a different origami fold and it's very much to encourage you to take some time out for yourself. A little bit of creative time which will help with your resilience, help you feel a little bit happier hopefully and uh, I just think it's a really important thing in these difficult times. So these films are all very much dedicated to my colleagues at UCH which is where I work, a hospital in London, particularly encouraging staff to find time for self-care. Um, very important but obviously for patients as well but for everybody in this time we're all in isolation at home and uh, I think ways that we can look after our well-being are really valuable. I was actually asked by a patient to learn how to do origami. It's not something I've done before but she spent time with me and was very patient and kind. It wasn't something I felt I could do before that um, but with that really kind positive attitude and going slowly you'll find you can do amazing things too. So I hope you'll also get that sense of achievement and just find this relaxing and delightful as well. So I'm originally actually a scientist and for me I do find it fascinating that it is a mixture, origami is a mixture of science and art, it's engineering really with paper and the possibilities are astonishing and you can make all sorts of three-dimensional things, how to change a piece of paper it's a whole culture where people have learned and passed things on. Transmission in a positive way is the best part of being human, is that culture. So I wanted to share with you uh, something rather special, I think, which is to be able to fold your own antibody, make your own antibody. So this is how our bodies naturally defend us. We are astonishing. We are constantly defending ourselves without realising, thank goodness, but our body does this. These, these are tiny little things, they're proteins in your body and they look like kind of like yeah, they have arms and a body and it's the ends of the arms that can stick on things and stop them working. So for example, if an antibody spotted a virus, it could go and stick on the spike and stop it working and then mark out those cells for destruction. So it's the end, it's these ends, ends that would recognise the spikes. So I have already shown you actually, or if you look through my videos, I will send a link, which is how to make your own kind of spiky star. This looks very much like a virus. So you can have a go at making your own virus, but also important that you make an antibody as well. And a vaccine works by just using a tiny end of a spike. So you just make a little spike, it's not the whole thing, so it's safe. And then you can go into your antibody. And when you have lots of antibodies, it will then protect you. So you may, you can see there's this little drawing. It's actually on both sides. So it's a drawing that I've made and we've managed to figure out how it can all come together. So if you're able to use a printer, do from the Viruses and Vaccines Project and I will include a link below. So you can print that out and it's quite fun because the picture will come together. If you don't have a printer, it's absolutely fine. I can show you how to fold from just a normal piece of paper. This is actually based on a traditional fold, which I've adapted a bit. So it's sort of like a vase. It's kind of that shape. Right, let's get let's get going. Grab yourself a piece of paper. If you do have a printout of this, use it because I think it'll be great fun. Um, I will show you actually with that, but I will also show you how to make a square too. So grab yourself something to press on. Got a board, got some paper. Uh, so here is the sheet. <laughs> it took a lot of lot of head power actually just doing it practically to figure out how to get a drawing to come back together again. Um, so I'm going to cut out this square but I will also show you, show you how to make a square out of just normal paper and it will still work and it could still be your your antibody. So yeah we'd love to see what you make so under hashtag viruses and vaccines I'll include information at the bottom of this. So it's been really nice to bring together actually my two, well, my many interests actually, but to bring the origami and science together. It is part of science and to help hopefully make sense of this strange time and the hope that science brings. Um, so for me, this is very much helps me understanding our remarkable body and how the body defends itself, how things like vaccines work. 
and it's all pretty amazing certainly stuff for the imagination so i've got a square there if you haven't got a printer that's absolutely fine to make a square this is just a random piece of paper i've got take a corner and line it up just take your time lining up those edges right way through the point so it could be any paper at all i've got this area here i'm going to turn it over bring it back line it up and if you give a good strong fold then you should be able to just tear that off there we go i do a little nick there so you can use that square i'm going to return actually to the other one just because it's quite fun to see how the drawing will come together but it's exactly the same thing right so if you're if you have got a print out of the drawing you can color it in later on definitely recommend coloring in um it, this is for all ages we all know it's relaxing turning it over i'm going to first of all just fold it in half and this is the same if you just have your blank piece of paper so i'm folding in half this is something called a multi-form where you can just play with it and you'll find loads of different shapes of hearing so it's this is a fun thing to do anyway. So I've opened it up and then I'm going to take the outside and go towards that middle line. So again, okay, just take your time. That's what makes it enjoyable. That's right. The great thing is with YouTube, you can just stop, you can go back, you can pause, you can change the speed. I sometimes do that because I follow quite a lot of the origami films. Some people can be too fast. I'm going to take the outside and bring it to the middle. I think it's because they're doing it for other people who do lots of origami. But I am assuming you haven't done this before. Or haven't done much. There we go. So I brought it together. That's it. Doesn't matter which size you've been using. It's looking intriguing. Um, next I'm going to fold it in half again. That's it getting smaller opening it up and then I'm going to take the top and fold that into the middle there we go getting smaller that's it and the same thing I'm going to take the top and bring it into the middle then we'll figure out what to do next that's it there we go so it's a nice little square at the moment. Doesn't matter if yours is looking the same or not. Really doesn't matter. So our next step is we're going to open up just one side. And we're going to do effectively opening up one side. And I'm going to fold a diagonal line there. So to do that, I'm picking it up and I'm taking this side. And I'm aiming towards that line so i'm bringing it up it sort of brings up the side at the same time so i'm bringing it up and then i'm pressing that down to give that that diagonal line there and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so again i'm picking this up i'm going to take this side and i'm going to line it up there there we go pressing that down so it should be looking like that and now you can hopefully push that down looking like a little house <laughs> antibodies in your house that would be great that's it there we go and making sure it's nicely through the point same thing on the other side the great thing is the paper you can reposition until you're happy um, so often it's getting rid of the little wrinkles if there are any little bits that have caught there or in the wrong position so that's what i'm just playing with myself at the moment got that attention to detail which is very much like being a scientist as well there we go then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so again we can open up this flap and we're going to do again a diagonal line so I'm going to take this middle line and then bring it to there. So there we go. 
pressing it down and then the same thing here this line down to there keeping those diagonal lines you'll soon get the hang of this okay, pressing that down usually easier on a solid surface and again the same thing you can then just close it down like so so there are many things you could do with this shape actually So it's looking something like that. Again, don't worry if your patterns, if you have used a printed sheet, if the patterns are in a different place, it's fine. It does not matter. Right, so our next step is, I would recommend, we've got those sort of diagonal lines underneath. If you pick these up and then just hold them back and forth, just so it's like a little, with a vein up there, I don't know, so it's sticking out a bit. There's a little bit of flexibility there. That will help. You can also make, um, the windmill this way as well so I'm just lif lifting up each of these little diagonal bits and folding folding down that's it okay and I'm just being making sure things don't look quite right you can always play around there we go that looks great okay so each of these bits are sticking up so the next step all sort of appears really and we'll see depending on which way I'm folding it which will happen we'll see so all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold along the diagonal and the diagonal then gives it a shape this looks like it's not the right way around can you see this not you can't see the antibody so I'm going to close up again and I'm going to instead have a play with the other diagonal so folding back along that diagonal Yay, that looks better. And I am now going to push it this way so that the picture emerges. If you're using plain paper, it truly doesn't matter which way you've done it, but it's just because I'm trying to match up the picture. Again, it's the same on the back here. I can then I can push it that way. That's not right. Push it that way and you can see the picture. That's it. So at the moment, it kind of you can see how it would be the vase, but we, we want to make it more of the shape of the antibody itself. So I'm going to take each of these little sharp corners and fold it inwards. Can you see? So I'm going to then fold it to match up there. Like so. Same here. This corner down to there. Joys are doing this into a camera. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Clever brain. <laughs> I don't know how that works. So there you go. There we go, and the same thing at the top. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it down this corner. I'm going to fold it down to this corner. Now at the moment you can see these flaps, so we want to then tuck them away. Just make it a little bit tidier. Okay, the choice of doing this into a camera. Same thing here, it's sharp and pointy. So I'm going to then bring it down, bringing it down, down to that corner like so. There we go. And it's made it, I think, a more, more the right kind of shape. So to get rid of these little flappy bits, if you sort of open it up and you'll see that there's a little pocket, all you have to do is push it in. We're going to tuck it away. So we're not adding any extra, I'm going to have to see what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm not adding in any extra lines. Instead, I'm, I'm going to push it in, following those lines, and then just closing it up. Oh, she says. So do make sure you follow the lines, then it will fold away perfectly. Can you see? And I'm going to do the same with this one here, maybe I'm going to turn to the back. Again, there's this little flap, opening up that pocket and then pushing that in. And you'll be able to then close it up like so. That's it. And then again, the same for these. We don't, we don't want these sticking out, do we? So it's again, opening it up 
and then pushing it in. That's it. Same thing here. Just off that. Opening it up and pushing it in. It's all hidden away. Right, there is one more step we can do to make this more like an antibody. So the ends of the arms have a little have a little dip where this can go in. At the moment it'll just fall through. So instead I want you to make a little pocket. So can you see that little triangle goes down? Simply bring this up and to that middle point and then close it. So that's given a little pocket where you can pop things in like your virus or vaccine and the same thing on the other arm again opening this up and folding this up to the middle point so the, yeah this is an adapted traditional piece of origami got made into an antibody why not so then because you've made that little pocket you can then pop something in there so this maybe we can really quickly make a little tiny spike like this because this is like a vaccine you, or you could also make your own virus as well so if you look at the modular ring and there's a link at the bottom of the text beneath this you could also make one of these which is definitely worth doing but then if you want to make a vaccine you're just going to make a tiny bit of the spike, not the whole thing. Um, I've actually been drawing the, what the actual spike looks like on the virus. And I just think it's so beautiful. It's perfect equilateral triangle. I've been encouraging people to fold with this as well. So if you've been following my videos, you may have done this too. Lots of science in these ones at the moment. We will go back to other, other themes soon. Um, so I'm going to cut this out. Um, Otherwise, what you can do is if you, you can make yourself a square and then just halve that. So you're making a triangle. Right, I'm going to cut this out briefly and just show you what I mean as well. So if you have also managed to print out the sheet, then you can use this. If you haven't, don't worry, I will show you what to do. So this will complete your antibody which if you have, when you have a vaccine, hopefully when you have a vaccine, then um, it's that little tiny spike, which will, if it sticks in, it means your body starts making lots more. It means you're then going to be well protected. I just love this shape. So to make my little spike, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold it in half. So you could also do the same thing just by getting and it's fine, it's a slightly different shape. If you're to make a square, make a square and actually just use that triangle, that'll be fine. So you could do the same kind of thing. That is good enough, honestly. And you could be doing the same thing again, so folding that in half. You can still make your own. I'm going to return to this one. Right. I'm next going to take the sides and fold to the middle. This is very much just a little made up. Just want to make a little, little spiky thing I can shove in my antibody. That's all. And it's fun if you want to colour these as well. I think the drawings are hopefully quite fun for colouring. And I'm just going to take the outside and bring it to the middle again. I'm just trying to make it a nice little sharp thing which I can shove in my antibody and then our antibody is complete and your body can make many more there we go it's like a little dart you could probably use this as a little plane too couldn't you <laughs> be careful <laughs> spike so then as before you've got that little pocket and you can pop it in quite a big spike but if you pop it into that corner, fold it up, hopefully it sticks and stays. And that's what you want to make. So I hope that's worked for you. I know it's a little bit different. It's a bit of science, origami, arts, all combined. And I think that art's an amazing way of trying to 
trying to make sense of our times and science is certainly I think is a way of really illuminating and understanding what's going on so I hope this combination has been has been good next week I'm going to show you also how to fold something that looks like DNA and I think that will then complete um, this kind of unusual collection I hope you're finding it interesting to do and I hope you're finding it relaxing as well thank you very much bye bye